Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. How an AR-15 works. <clears throat> Hello, guys. I'm the Lazy Historian. That's a, that's a good name, isn't it? Trademark. I'm taking that. Um, because I'm laying down. Get it? Anyways, let, let's learn. Uh, preemptive like. Original link to the video. Top of the description. Right below that. Link to the Discord. Click on it. Love to have you. Click on it. Click. Bah. Let's go. Uh, Matt Rittman. I'll give him a preemptive sub. Ooh, and, uh, and, uh, ooh, I got this one here. Seriously, the lazy historian that I trademark. Pressing the magazine release frees the magazine from the lower receiver. Rounds are loaded and held under high force of the... Just to let you guys know, I've never held a gun in my life. So uh, I do not know much, if anything, about guns, and, and I'm going to have a lot of questions. Magazine, the lower receiver. Rounds are loaded and held under high force of the magazine spring. It's then inserted into the magwell and secured by the magazine catch. Pulling and releasing the charging handle chambers the first round. The charging handle forces the bolt carrier group to the rear. As it comes back, the action spring is compressed. As the carrier returns forward, the bolt strips the top cartridge from the magazine and guides it into the chamber. Housed within the bolt carrier is the bolt. The bolt contains several locking lugs that engage with the barrel extension lugs. As it makes contact with the barrel breech face, the bolt turns and locks into place. The locking function is due to the cam pin housed within the bolt. The pin rides along a track in the bolt carrier, allowing it to rotate. When the bolt is open, it's locked in the forward position and can only rotate once the cam pin has cleared the recess in the upper receiver. In the rare occurrence where the bolt fails to fully close, the forward assist may be used. Pressing the forward assist plunger allows the pawl to engage with the notches cut into the bolt carrier. This will force the carrier forward until the bolt is fully locked. Okay. With the selector taken off to safe position, the AR-15 is ready to fire. A recess cut into the selector permits trigger movement. As the trigger is pulled, the hammer is released from the sear. The hammer spring drives the hammer forward to strike the firing pin, causing it to travel forward and impact the cartridge primer. Within the primer is the ignition compound and an anvil. Uh, question, guys. W what would happen if... <clears throat> oh, sorry. What would happen if... What was I going to say? Oh, oh uh, you... you you hit the back of the bullet like that, but outside of the gun. Would it just like blow up like a grenade? Like a really tiny grenade? Within the primer is the ignition compound and an anvil. As the firing pin strikes the primer, a spark is created, igniting the propellant inside the cartridge. The expanding gases propel the bullet down the barrel, where rifling grooves impart stabilizing spin on the bullet. So, that's so, that's so interesting. Um, the exp it, it's so simple and yet genius in that, I, I'm not talking about the AR-15, I'm just talking about guns in general. How it's just, it's, so essentially a gun, no, or a grenade... I'm asking a question. I'm not stating a fact. So a grenade is a gun that is just exploded without the inside of the gun. It, it, sorry, it is a bullet exploded, but instead of it being like this, you would have things all around the black powder or the, the gunpowder, and then it would explode things in all directions. And so a gun is just a really controlled grenade, right? It's just, you explode it, there's one projectile, 
and it has to follow the groove of the gun. So you point it where you want to shoot at, and it follows that. And that's, that's fascinating. Expanding gases propel the bullet down the barrel, where rifling grooves impart stabilizing spin on the bullet. The gases escape through a small port in the barrel, through the gas tube, and into the bolt carrier key, forcing it to the rear. Isn't that going to decrease the, the speed of the bullet? Tube through a small port. So I, I would assume that the, the less gas that escapes out of the barrel before the bullet exits the barrel, then the faster the bullet will go. In the barrel, through the gas tube, and into the bolt carrier key, forcing it to the rear. The extractor grips the rim of the spent cartridge case and holds it against the bolt face until the ejector forces it through the ejection port, striking the deflector as it exits. As the bolt carrier comes back, it returns the hammer to its cocked position and stays held back by the disconnector. When the buffer reaches the back of the receiver extension, the action spring returns the bolt carrier forward. As it returns, the bolt strips a new cartridge from the magazine and directs it into the chamber. Simultaneously, the extractor clips into the rim of the new cartridge. Releasing the trigger releases the hammer from the disconnector. And again, the trigger sear assumes control of the hammer, readying the rifle for another shot. Military variants of the AR-15, such as the M16 and M4, add a third option for fully automatic fire. The inclusion of an auto sear and a hook on the back of the hammer allow continuous operation while the trigger is depressed. Moving the selector to auto, the disconnector is disabled from moving and will be unable to hold the hammer when fired. The auto sear is now able to rotate into a recess in the selector. After a shot is taken, the auto sear rotates forward as the bolt carrier comes back, taking control of the hammer. As the bolt carrier returns forward, the back of the carrier trips the auto sear, releasing the hammer just after the bolt closes. I was just about to ask, how, how does the reloading the next gun, the next bullet as it does, keep up with a, a continuously pressed down trigger, but that shows it right there, there's only, there's a maximum speed that I can fire at, and, okay. Releasing the trigger allows the seer to again assume control of the hammer. In order to conserve ammunition and promote greater accuracy, a burst mode was later introduced. With the auto sear still present, the disconnector is split in two. The left disconnector takes control of the hammer in semi-fire mode. Switching to burst fire disables the left disconnector. The burst cam and clutch spring allow the M4 to fire up to three rounds at a time. The clutch spring expands to rotate the cam only when the hammer moves in reverse. As the trigger rotates forward, the burst disconnector engages the deep notch of the cam. The cam rotates as the hammer is brought back and the disconnector engages the first small notch. This isn't enough for the disconnector to hold the hammer and the auto sear is tripped to fire another round. The cam rotates again and the cycle is repeated. The cam rotates once more and the hook engages the third deeper notch. The disconnector is now able to reach the hammer, holding it back. The trigger So it, it's 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 like three quick shots. It's boom, 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 caught. Must be released and pulled again to fire another three rounds.
Once the final round of ammunition has been fired, the magazine follower pushes up on the bolt catch, holding it open as it returns forward. Inserting a new magazine and pressing the bolt catch will chamber a new round. Using a cartridge, the front sight post can be adjusted up or down for zeroing. The rear sight includes two apertures. For short ranges, the zero to 200 meter is used. For longer ranges, the smaller aperture is used. Turning the elevation knob will raise and lower the sight depending on the distance. The knob on the right of the sight is used to adjust for windage. The calibration so the distance, so so that's uh, so that's um, accounting for the the bullet falling to the ground. The knob on the right of the sight is used to adjust for windage. The calibration lines on the back of the sight help control windage adjustments during firing. The carry handle on the AR-15 can be removed to allow for alternative optics. So if you Sorry. forget to reset the windage thing, then you're gonna, and you think you're firing straight on, it's actually going to miss. Help control windage adjustments during firing. The carry handle on the AR-15 can be removed to allow for alternative optics, such as holographic sights or longer range scopes like the ACOG. Many ARs are equipped with an adjustable stock. The stock rides along the receiver extension, commonly referred to as the buffer tube. Pressing the release lever, moving it to the desired position and releasing it will lock it in place. The ejection port cover can be closed when the rifle is not in use to protect the inner parts from outside elements. The cover opens automatically when the rifle is fired. Crazy how many things are automatically done just by pushing the trigger. That was a cool video. Um, Matt Rittman here. New channel. Ooh, a shotgun. It's only four minutes long. I'm just going to do this one quick, too. Shot shells are loaded into the magazine through the bottom of the receiver. The compressed magazine spring keeps tension on the... I used to find these things all the time at the beach, uh, the shotgun shells. I'm sure you the still could. The compressed magazine spring keeps tension on the shells. Pressing the action bar lock allows the foreend to be pulled to the rear. As it comes back, a shell is fed into the receiver. Pushing forward on the forend lifts the shell and the bolt guides it into the chamber. So the shotgun shell is just filled with, with hundreds of smaller beads, beads, right? As the forend like moves a back, a cutout on the bottom of the slide engages the carrier dog. As the slide moves forward, downward force is put on the carrier, acting as a lever to lift the shell up. The left and right latches allow shells into the receiver under the control of the fore-end tube assembly. Notches on the assembly move the latches in and out at specific times. The left latch holds the shell until the fore-end is almost fully rearward. After the first shell advances into the receiver, the right latch catches the next shell. As the foreend is pushed forward, the first shell is moved into the chamber and the left latch assumes control of the next shell. When the bolt makes contact with the breech face, the slide pushes up on the locking block, locking it into the barrel. 
With the safety in the off position, the trigger is free to move. Pulling the trigger rotates the sear, which releases the hammer. The hammer strikes the firing pin, causing it to travel forward and impact the shell primer. The inside of a shot shell contains a primer, powder charge, a wad, and shot or a slug. Inside the primer is a primer cup, priming compound, and an anvil. As these are struck by the firing pin, a chain reaction ignites the powder charge inside the shell and the wad is propelled down the barrel. Just after leaving the barrel, the wad opens so the shot can spread. The extractor grips the rim of the spent shell case. I feel like if I were to have any gun to like protect myself, I would want this one because it doesn't require a lot of aim. As the forend is pulled to the rear, the bolt is unlocked and the case is extracted from the chamber. But it is a long gun, so it's harder to kind of... I... The bolt continues to the rear and the ejector kicks out the empty case from the receiver. As the bolt comes back, the hammer is reset and held back by the sear. When the forend is fully forward, the action bar lock lowers the connector. Again, allowing control of the sear with a pull of the trigger. Yeah, that was cool. I enjoyed both those videos. Um, I definitely learned something with both of them. And yeah, it's crazy. I was just, it's, it's a mini hand, it's a hand cannon. Just explosion inside a closed area with one exit with a projectile in front of the explosion with only one way to go. Smart. Alrighty. Hope you guys are doing well. If not, chin up. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. Trust me. See you next time, guys. Bye.